City Councilman Yusuf Salam, one of the exonerated five, now has oversight of the NYPD as chair of the Public Safety Committee. So my first question to you is, to, has your view of the NYPD changed since you've been chairing the Public Safety Committee? I think my view of the NYPD has changed since I've come out of prison and really been engaging audiences about the future of what policing can look like. So how has it changed? I mean, you, you thought that you were wrongly convicted and you didn't think that the police were right. And how has that changed since you've been out? Well, the good thing about it is that I spoke to an audience once, and this was right after the Central Park Five documentary was released. Young girl in the audience, 13 years old, she stands up and says, I'm a cadet, I'm 13, I want to become a cop. What advice can you give me? And now, you said... Of course, I was like... But I'm, I'm so happy that I thought about what to say to her because... I realized very quickly that this was not an officer yet. She represented what the future of policing could look like. And so I gave her some of my best advice, the fact that on the side of cop cars, there's the words to serve and protect, that in New York, we go a step above and beyond and add the words courtesy, professionalism, and respect. And that's the key. Right, and I said to her, if you can be this type of officer, you will be the best officer. And I know many officers like that. And so it's not that the whole of the police department's across America, in fact, are the same. There's many, many different layers of humanity that is inside of those places. And I think we're trying to tap into that humanity in order to get the best, the very best out of them. So here's the thing, people today say they don't feel safe. I wonder if you think that more police officers are the answer. You know what? What would add to the safety of our communities is a living wage. Because poverty is something that drives crime. When people's backs are against the wall, when they're in survival mode, often they do things that they wouldn't necessarily do. So you're saying that a lot of the things that happen, like on the subways and other places, are the, the, the theft of, you know, the shoplifting and things like that are because people are poor. People are trying to survive. I mean, we live in a state right now, a city in fact, that the cost of living for a single person is around 30, 131,000 if you are keeping up with the times. Right. Most people individually do not make $131,000 a year. That's a lot of now, money. if you look at me and my family, they say that if you have a two-parent household with two children, you need at least $300,000 in order to live comfortably in New York. And that's not happening. I have 10 children. <laughs> that is not happening anywhere across the board. But when you think about the fact that everything has gone up, but our our, our wages have not caught up with the time. So what should the city council be doing? What should businesses be doing? Um, I know that we recently raised, raised the wages for delivery people, but what about other people? I mean, should the city and the state be doing that as an anti-crime move as opposed to hiring more cops? I think absolutely. I think we have to work in tandem. I call it righteous collaboration. And when we do that, we get the opportunity to look at all sides, consider all the possibilities, and realize that when we're trying to solve for the immediate, it's about looking into the future and then working your way back towards this goal. In the meantime, we may need to show up security. But at the same time, we also need to make sure, in fact, that for instance, as we deal with the migrant crisis, that we also deal with the homelessness in, Amer right. in, in New York. We have to do them both. Well, you know, you brought up subways. Do you think that we need more police officers on the subways to make people feel safe? The, the idea that people see police officers, not just, you know, have those call buttons where you can call for help? I would say yes. I was, actually, I would say absolutely. If we had officers that did what I remember when I was a child, they would walk the cars. When you saw them, that was a great deterrent. So you want to have more cops on the, on the subways? In the, in the short term, yes. In the short term, because it is a deterrent, it is something... When you can see those individuals who are the guardians of society doing what it is that we hired them to do, oh my goodness, game well, changer. So, but you know, you raised the issue of poverty causing crime, a contributing, contributing factor. And one of the things on the subway is fare evasion and the fact that the MTA says we need more police officers going after fare evaders. Now do you think that's a good thing, a bad thing? And is that preying on people who just can't afford to use the system? I think that's a bad thing. That, that absolutely oftentimes is preying upon people that need to use the system and um, there's many people, many children in fact, who try to use their Metro cards and their Metro cards are not working. And 
you know, to arrest a person, to give them a summons or anything like that. There's other things that we could be doing. And I think that that is, that they, they may consider that the low hanging fruit, but the, you know, the truth of the matter is that we can do so much more to show up New York City. So I have a question for you. You know, um, Mayor Adams has talked about um, an anti-police bias, which he says is causing um, the possibility of a law enforcement crisis because it's making it difficult to recruit cops who are retiring in droves, to recruit correction officers and other people, firefighters, EMS workers, people who work in the law enforcement community. Do you think he's right? that we are on the verge of a law enforcement crisis because people just don't want to do those jobs because they're not popular? Or is he over-dramatizing the problem? So there's, there's a few things, I think, that I've, I've heard from the community. And, you know, one of the things is, of course, yes, we need officers that do the jobs of protecting society. We also need to make sure that it makes sense, right? In the background, if you have been giving a mandate that says, look, you will only be able to rise up this ladder of success by doing X. That's a challenge because oftentimes people enter into these professions because they want to be noble. But if you have a family to feed, if you have things that you need to do, you might do things that you might not normally do and say, well, this is just my job. And we need people to look at the humanity inside of themselves as they provide that same security to us. So how do you recruit more us? people? I mean, there are more and more attacks on police officers than ever before. Um, we've just lost a police officer who was shot. Yeah. How do you recruit? I mean, you can't have a, a, a city without, you know, police officers and correction officers and people like that. I, I, I would agree. I would agree that you need a system that works and a system that is fair, a system that is unbiased. However. You know, my heart goes out to all of the officers that lost their lives in the line of duty. It's one of the most tragic of stories. You know, here you are protecting and serving. You've stepped up, in fact, to be a guardian of society, and your life gets shot down that way. Um, we need to really have, I think, a conversation that includes all of the people who have been, in fact, close to the pain, because that's how we find the best solutions. So another question I have is this. The governor wants to um, increase the number of crimes that are regarded as hate crimes because she thinks that there's been such an increase in those kinds of situations. Anti-Asian, anti-black, anti-Jewish, anti-Palestinian, anti-everything. Do you think that's a good thing and do you think that we should be increasing penalties for people who commit hate crimes? I think so. I think we should make sure, in fact, that when specifically hate crimes happen that we have something to address that and I think when I you know of course as a as a black man and also as a Muslim um, I have not yet seen that same type of um, laws attributed to black men and black people in particular um, I know we're we're working there we're getting there but I think that that really um, it drives things you know because it causes people to say uh oh I, I need to see this person. I cannot use my bias in order to trample upon their rights. I really should see and understand that they might be saying Allahu Akbar, and that means God is the greatest. You know what, God is the greatest. So another issue that's working its way through Albany that will actually affect us in New York City has to do with how we should deal with shoplifting retail crimes. And the governor is mm. wanting to add more penalties for people who shoplift, which is getting a lot of pushback in Albany, among, uh, especially in the assembly, because they're concerned that stiffer penalties aren't going to stop people from shoplifting and we get back to your issue of poverty driving people to do that how do you come down on her desire to increase the penalties for shoplifting well i mean we have to really really consider what is actually happening what, it, what when you for instance catch a shoplifter what do they have on them what are they stealing oftentimes it's just bare necessities food clothing health goods you know and i mean food clothing shelter those are our needs. Everything else is a want. So we should increase the penalties, we shouldn't increase the penalties. I don't think we, we shouldn't attack a problem with prison, for instance. You know, and okay. I, when, when, I, when I think about how we've been attacking mm -hmm. problems like, you know, mental health 
as an example, you know, even with the officers, right? Our officers are called to the scenes when in fact we need to be sending mental health workers there. And so I think we really should figure out how do we infuse the society so that the, the, the one who is on the bottom gets the opportunity to be lifted out of their condition. I get it. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.